I will zip through the, the first couple of slides very quickly while we start up the, the rest of the stuff. Many of you probably know that, um, or thinking to yourselves, didn't Fedora just move? And yes, Fedora has done several moves in the past. Um, we have had um, our first data center that I was aware of. There was ones before this, back when Fedora really started. But the one that I, I became aware of was Phoenix One. Uh, it was a set of four racks in um, a small data center. Uh, which was a actually a uh, mili ex-military hardened data center for um, um, in case of nuclear war type thing. Um, very nice location, uh, completely locked down. You had to go through cattle gates to get into the building. You had to go through cattle gates several times to go to section to section on it. Um, we moved at the time, um, it had no IPv6, and that was something we were looking at. And my favorite thing was the old man behind the screen, uh, which, you know, standard, I mean, like a full bullet foot, foot glass. He was an old man there who had a sawed-off shotgun. So I always felt like this when I walked in. Um... We moved into Phoenix 2, which is actually the first Phoenix is in Mesa, which is a suburb of, um, and we moved from Mesa to Chandler. This was done in about late 2009. Uh, we started, we had three or four racks. We would grow and we would shrink. Uh, OpenShift took a couple of racks for a bit. Um, It was a really nice data center at the beginning. It had an automated uh, vacuum powered uh, ice cream machine. It had um, an automated coffee cup thing that would serve you a different types of coffee depending on what you're doing. And this was Kevin's, I always think of Kevin when I th see this uh, cartoon because when the coffee machine went away, that was the major uh, crying point. Uh, do you want to say anything, Kevin? I don't know. Can I say anything? Yes, you can say something. So the next, I will start the slideshow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Start from current slide. All right, I think, yes, I had exchanged the wrong slide. Give me one second while LibreOffice does its thing. All right, so yes, um, after the machine went away, we had a very hard used uh, Mr. Coffee that usually had, what your way of making coffee was pouring water over the dry grounds at the bottom and um, drinking whatever was out of that. Am I sharing still? Yes, yes you okay. are. Uh, is this my, uh, my slide? Yes, yeah, you have okay. the, uh, go ahead. You have, uh, I have one, two, you have four, or I have two, three, you have four, five. Got it. Um, so uh, why move? Uh, since we were uh, in Phoenix. Um, the space was coming up for renewal. Uh, also, our space was kind of uh, glommed on to the edge of the rest of uh, Red Hat space in that data center. So it was kind of part of another big area. So they wanted to kind of cut off that little area uh, also. Uh, there was no IPv6. Uh, I can't, sorry, I can't raise the microphone anymore. It's cranked and if I mess with it, it goes away. So I'll try and shout. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, there's no IPv6 uh, available there or any plans uh, to do it. Um, and we had bottlenecks with both storage and networking there. 
Uh, our storage was shared with uh, several other groups and uh, you know, that sometimes caused problems for us and sometimes for them. And uh, it was just uh, all kind of mixed in. And uh, the one gig networking most of the time was fine, but occasionally caused us bottlenecks. Um, the uh, hardware overhaul affected too many services at once. Uh, so if we tried to overhaul stuff, uh, we ended up affecting more than we intended. Uh, and yes, the last point, Phoenix in summer is very hot. Uh, I recall a couple of times working there and you're in the data center and it's 60 degrees Fahrenheit and it's dark and you walk outside and you open those doors and it's 120 degrees and very bright. <laughs> so that, that's always fun. Or at uh, 11 o'clock at night, it would be still 120 degrees. <laughs> yes. There, there were a couple times I walked out where I thought it was night because of the habobs that would uh, float in, and so. <laughs> uh, yes, that picture there is uh, one of those lovely ones. Yep. Anyway, so our goals uh, for moving to the new data center, um, we were going to uh, deploy 10 gig networking wherever we could. Uh, we don't have it completely everywhere, but we uh, we plan to put it on a lot of the uh, bigger use systems. Actually, um, every system now has 10 gig. Oh, it does. Okay. I thought there were still a few holdouts. Nope, nope. But... That was uh, Matt's uh, present to us. Cool. That's excellent. So uh, IPv6 is available there, although right now you may notice it's not enabled. Uh, we ran into a problem with the deployment and we decided to disable it for now and wait until things stabilize and then re-enable it uh, later in the month or maybe next month. Uh, but we should have good IPv6 connectivity there for whatever we want. Uh, we have dedicated storage there. So we got a rack of uh, storage hardware planned out from, uh, from the Red Hat IT storage guys. Uh, we're not sharing that with anyone and it's sized for us and it has room for growth and uh, it's in general just a lot faster and better. Uh, there's much better peering at the new data center with all of the cloud providers, uh, AWS, Google Cloud, IBM Cloud, you name it, they have pre point of presence there. So doing a networking to them is very, very easy and very fast. Uh, and this was an opportunity for us to clean house, consolidate. We had a whole bunch of stuff that was spread out everywhere or not together with things that were like it or cables running across four, net, four racks to get over to the switch that had a port and that kind of thing. Uh, also, it let us remove a bunch of the outdated hardware that we were planning to get rid of at some point anyway, but this gave us a good refresh cycle to get on new hardware uh, uh, from the get-go. So, next slide. So, how do you do a move? It's a long journey, but the first thing you need to do is be prepared for meetings. Lots and lots of meetings. You, you think to yourself, well, it's just a bunch of servers. You just put them in a box. You send them over to the other site. They'll undo it. It'll all be done in a weekend. I, I had multiple people tell me this and uh, I was pretty aware that this wasn't going to be occurred, but it got to the point where because there were so many groups involved uh, inside of Red Hat, outside of Red Hat, at the data location, um, I had, there were several times I had an IRC meeting going, I had another meeting here, and I had on my phone with a earplug to the other ear, the third meeting. Um, uh, it can be very, it was a lot. But one of the things I found out, and it's, it's clear why we had so many meetings, is the fact that you get so many people going into a meeting, they have a lot of other things going on in their lives. They, they come out of the meeting with something that they thought they heard, and by the next week, you have a completely different plan. You have 20 different plans going on when you need to have one. Um, 
we had a huge number of meetings in the middle. And by the end of it, we had a lot fewer meetings because everybody had gotten aware of the fact that this everybody was on step with everything. It took a while to get everybody together on things. And every time you get in somebody new, you'd had to have a bunch of meetings to get them back. You know, it was like herding cats, a lot of cats. Uh, the plan for doing this um, turned into a very large, large thing. Um, Kevin came up with a minimum viable fedora. Uh, we worked on what needed to be done there. We built out a lot of the, um, we took down Communist Shift, sent it to one center. At one, one point we thought we would have everything at one center, but then we realized we had fewer racks than um, we were uh, expecting. And that meant that things had to go somewhere else. So we uh, moved to RDU at the same time as the minimum viable Fedora systems got moved from um, uh, Phoenix to, um, we then set up the the, the basics over uh, a weekend and a half, week and a half, sorry, and then got the systems going. Uh, middle of March, uh, so originally we we thought we were going to be doing this in March, and it ended up moving to May, and then uh, we finally got everything just pushed out the door in June. Most of that was due to the fact that, as everyone else is, that COVID nineteen. Uh, removed a lot of mobility and such that we could uh, travel to data centers and do things. So instead, we had to then um, engage on hands help, which also meant more meetings uh, to get them up on speed and what needed to be done at each site. Next uh, week. Is this me or? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, so uh, IAD2, which as MISC is noting, is the airport code of the nearest airport to the data center. Uh, I guess Red Hat already has an IAD1 that's an office uh, somewhere. So this became IAD2. Uh, we've got six racks, um, which is much less than we had in Phoenix, but they're, they're taller. They're 52U racks. Um, five of them are for our machines, and one of them is dedicated to storage, uh, so it has all the, the storage stuff in it. Um, it has IPv6, as I mentioned, we're going to probably be turning that on in the next month or so. Um, we replaced a whole bunch of old Dell R520s with fewer uh, R640s, uh, and they're really nice. They're they have a lot of a lot of resources, and we can really densely pack VMs on those things. Uh, so it's it's been really great. Um, so we have less room to grow there, but we have a lot higher density there. Uh, so we're using the space much more efficiently, I think. Uh, again, the very fast interconnection peering uh, and 10 gig networking for pretty much everything. So uh, that's really improved things like schlepping images around or syncing uh, data from one place to another, et cetera, et cetera. Um, another thing was, is I remember the first, while we were under the minimum viable Fedora and we had, we were expecting we would not be able to run as many services as we had. Um, we were able to run more services than because the, the new servers have a lot more memory than we, uh, usually get, but they also, the 10 gig networks um, s allowed to seem to, even though we never saturated a one gig, the latency and such between the two, on the one gigs was enough to um, cause things to be slower overall and builds seem to have been improved under uh, the 10 gig. Yeah, one little uh, tidbit here is that uh, the updates pushes, we push updates for all uh, Fedora, all active Fedoras and all active Apples and flat packs and containers and all those 
every day, and now they're taking all of them about an hour and a half, which is significantly less than it took in Phoenix for that same pile of things. Yeah, it was like a day at one point. It was it was bad. So uh, next slide. Yes, sir. So uh, what's left undone? And there are still things that are undone. Uh, RDU2, where we moved some amount of things, as Smooch mentioned, we didn't have enough space or there were various other logistical issues. Uh, so we moved some things to RDU2 and we thought at the time, you know, these, these things are gonna arrive, uh, that's local to Smooch, he can go there and, and work on it and it should be pretty easy to get things back up. Unfortunately, uh, COVID-19 hit, so there's very uh, good restrictions on that data center. And uh, we're still trying to finish IED2, which is the higher priority. So Smooch can't really go down there because he's working on IED2. And we turns out we need to re-architect the way the network is set up because they're in a rack. It's da, 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 da. So there's all kinds of logistical issues around the RD2 stuff. And we have been working to try and bring some of that online. Um, some of it's obviously more important than others. Uh, retrace instances there, uh, the COPER uh, PPC 64LE builders, the ARM maintainer test instances. And um, it's just gonna take more time and it's gonna be kind of its own project. It kind of was part of this project, but it's not had focus because everything has been trying to finish I-82. So we're, we're going to try and concentrate on that as soon as we uh, finish up the IED2 stuff and hopefully get some of that stuff online, but it's it's just been a lot harder than we uh, anticipated. Uh, staging is still being brought up. Um, and this has been complicated a little bit by the fact that we're building up our new authentication system in staging, uh, Noggin. So we want uh, to get that all set up so that we can deploy that later in production. Uh, that's going to take over the next few weeks or so uh, to finish bringing that stuff up. And there's some open QA resources, uh, the secondary, or sorry, alternative architecture stuff, uh, ARM, PPC64, and some more workers for x86. And those will probably come online the next month also. Uh, they're there, they're, they're ready to go. We just need to get them installed and set up on the right networking, et cetera. Okay, this move really needed a lot of help from a lot of people and there are not enough thank yous to everybody who has put up with this um, from family members to uh, co-workers who have dropped other projects to a lot of patients from a lot of people who had things they needed done right away, but had realized that they could not until sometime in the future. Um, I This is not a complete list. Um, we've, thank you all. I'll, I'll add a shout out to uh, Aoife for all of her organizational and helping herd all of the various uh, groups that we needed to meet with and setting things up and making sure things worked. And that was very, very nice. Yes, yes. This project would not have gotten completed without Aoife's uh, amount of putting things together and keeping us on track and taking a lot of crap from people. So thank you. This week, guys, uh, you did all of the work, so thank you. All right, we're down to the question section. I will uh, unscreen, un uh, do the full screen. Um, I go back to the question picture because I like that picture. I was actually going to be the only image I was going to use for this entire talk. Uh, just variations of that one meme, uh, but. So, I am here to answer questions. Do we have any? Um, 
in general, I think that the um, it'll take about a month of planning to figure out all the VLANs and such, uh, how that's going to be done, and where they're going to be. And then we can look at uh, implementing the plan for the RDU stand up. So it's not going to be as big as this, I hope, but because it's taken a while and a lot of other plans have been waiting, it may. Hello, Aoife. It's okay. It's all right. Uh, we are not using Ceph. Um, it is just not going to. We do not have the physical hardware. Ceph basically, uh, Ceph and Gluster and the other things basically trade um, the smarts of a NetApp to a uh, smarts of a. Um, I'd have to take the NetApp down and fill it up with equivalent number of storage disks um, of Dells or Supermicros or whatever. And I just don't have the space for it. And so to go to it, I'd have to drop a rack of other equipment, which is then a sign of something else that's going to be done. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the storage, as, as Smooch mentioned, the storage is NetApp right now uh, because the Red Hat IT folks are managing that for us. And uh, we have some rather large needs at the moment. Um, we've looked at some other things, but yeah, as Smooch mentioned, we just have to expand so much in disks and managing, and, and we just... <laughs> we don't have the staff to manage it. We don't have the time to manage it. Um... It's everybody always thinks, you know, I've got this small thing and I've done it and it shouldn't take that long. And, or I, my set is, but we have to mirror our stuff throughout the company. We have to, um, transfer the data around. There is a large amount of things that require that want zero expect zero latency. Um, and the setup of a Ceph cluster or a, and such is usually something that is asking for, you know, N front nodes, Y brick nodes, K, um, and then they also want to have some control over the switch switches, which we don't have, and some other things. It, it's Setting yeah, up the uh, stuff thing is going to be a as big a would be as big a project as moving us across the country. Uh, as Misk asks about the uh, mirroring feature, of the NetApp, yes, we are they are replicating all of our data over to RDU2 uh, to another NetApp cluster there for disaster recovery, etc. Well, and then that data it. gets replicated on a different set of networks to uh, throughout the engineering. So it's there's not there's multiple snapping going on um, we also are being able to use some of the features now because we have aws so uh some of the stuff we have backed up that we're probably we have to keep but we can't we don't ever want to look at like old builds for the s390 um and the ppc are being uh snap mirrored off to AWS in uh, Glacier. So allows us to do some things. I expect we could do it all in Ceph or some other storage thing. It's just, you know, time. And uh, you either get, you can either, we can either set this up or we can do builds. <laughs> and I think everybody wants the builds as much as they want something else. All right, uh, do, 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 do. Um,
there was one question earlier i don't know why they got you to have talked about um zach wanted to know what the oldest box in uh center was and also was everything on a one gig network so on the old network oh that was the other thing we got rid of uh we got rid of some ibm um x3550s uh, that I'd gotten in 2009 and had been using for various services until um, we, uh, that was part of, the, it was not just the R520s, which we got in to 2012, I think. There were several, um, back before IBM sold these to Lenovo. So this is, um, they were the um, X series. System X uh, systems that we had gotten, um, and um, our data analysis, backups, log, some log analysis, and some other things, uh, and all of that cloud hardware um, was uh, on that. Then we had um, currently the oldest equipment i think we have is we have some six-year-old dell r630s and a couple of uh loaner equipment that ibm grace uh loans us which are um for the power systems there's a couple of power eights that are probably of the same era as the uh, six years or older um No, it does not. <laughs> we we jokingly asked that question a number of times, but yes, uh, no, yes. I don't it does. Um, thank you, Misk. Thank you. I'll have flashbacks now for the next three hours. Um, well, for, for anyone who doesn't understand that, it's a running joke because there's uh, certain people who are very interested in Internet too, but most for the most part, it's not very relevant. <laughs> uh we had um um so the, uh, the final question i think we'll call this quits um uh we our management software uh was split across multiple things i had for the dell for the ibm systems i keep a uh windows xp box so i can get into the management systems of the old ibms i can finally retire that so that uh uh, I don't have to do that. Uh, currently, the and the Dell 520s and the 20 series were all uh, IDRAX 7s, and I found that uh, Java 10 does not work well with it. Um, so we're now able to use HTML um, consoles for most of everything, which is okay, except I'm an Emacs user. And so my hands use a lot of control keys and that causes the browser to um, print things to my printer. Uh, another challenge that we're going to hit very, very, very soon is that Firefox just turned off TLS 1.1 and 1.2. So um, that's gonna break vast quantities of these things. So we're gonna have to keep an old VM around or something. Which yeah, I'm thinking we'll be- I think we'll be setting up a squid proxy is the, the thing is what people have been saying because it's all those systems are on a locked down network anyway. Yep. Uh, that's about it for us. Um, and I hope you all have enjoyed this move as much as I have. <laughs> Let's never do it again. Uh, we'll be doing another move in three years. Thank you. See us again then. <laughs>